Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. And uh, first, let me apologize for the long delay here. Um, as you know, I, I had a lot going on up here with Photostock and with uh, the, uh, the Bliss Fest that was happening, which I was not a part of this year, but I'm a participant, so I guess I was a part of it. And uh, it just takes a lot. You know, there's a lot of people that come up and visit, and uh, there's some people staying at my place, and the, the festival is just over the hill. And uh, you, you saw the, the post that I put up uh, a couple weeks ago, or last week, I guess it was. Anyway, so and then in the meantime, I lost my little recording device. I used this little tentacle sync device that I use to sync up all my cameras and to uh, also sync up my, my computer and everything and, and the vocal, and it records separately. And I lost it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so I, I, for the last few days, I've been going crazy, stepping back, thinking back, how did I lose it? Where did it go? And it all kind of centered back into my car. It must have been in my car someplace. Uh, and it's a new car. I went through with a flashlight. I couldn't find anything. I went through another day with it. You know, it got to the point where I was looking over and over and over for this thing. And in the same places, finally today, I figure it's got to be in the car if it's not anywhere else. So I went in there and I really looked and I pushed the passenger seat all the way forward. And I went up there with a flashlight and there it was stuck just on the back of one of the tracks of the uh, seat. So it had fallen off uh, when I was working in the car and it had gone down in there unbeknownst to me and I just kind of overlooked it. So I've got it back. I'm with you and I'm happy. So, uh, you know, it makes much better video. Without further ado, let's get to the image that you all chose. Um, it was neck and neck there for a little while and uh, unfortunately not that many people voted. I think we maybe only had eight or nine votes. So I'm really hoping that more of you will participate in this. Um, but anyway, the winning image was the uh, Rouge Steel from 1994. Now, uh, I'll put that up on the screen right now while you're, while you're uh, watching me here. Now, what this does, and I'm really glad that you picked this, and any number, any one of the images that you picked this week would have been uh, more of a challenge in that they were not shot digitally, they were back shot on, on film. Now, this is uh, my, from my Hasselblad that I shot all in 120. Um, this is the actual negative that I, uh, that I made that night. Now, the thing about this perfect negative is, or the, the one that I used when I say perfect, is the fact that it was kind of alone on the, uh, on the strip, and I actually clipped it out and used it at another time for a big show that I did in Toronto one time of these big uh, 30 by 30 images that we had to print um, at a lab in Toronto. Um, my good friend Bob Carney's uh, lab. Uh, anyway, um, he requested that I have them singly cut out so that we could uh, float them in glass and, and, uh, and therefore enlarge them. Anyway, it took me a little while to find this thing. And uh, as you might know, or as you might not know, I'm not the most organized guy. I mean, I've been shooting for years, 45, 50 years, and uh, I've got negatives at least they're all in one place. And from a certain point on in my life, they're all categorized pretty well, but other ones are just kind of categorized by project or this or that. So I really had to dig for this negative and I'm really glad that I found it. And uh, anyway, this is gonna show you what I have to do to digitize, uh, not only to work on an image on the uh, screen, but to digitize it as well. So um, what I'm gonna do here is show you the way that I do that just kind of briefly. Now I've got, a camera set up here, of course. This is my D850, and I'm using a lens here that I purchased specifically for this. It's a 60 millimeter uh, Nikon lens. Now, all of these are more modern lenses and more modern camera so that I can tether them to a computer. And as you can see, I've got this blue cord, which is a USB cord with a little bit extra kick to it because I have some control over the camera as well from my computer, and it tethers the computer to the camera. And therefore, I can be free of it. I don't have my hands on it. I can make all my adjustments on the computer, um, what have you. So first, what I need to do, though, is get the negative down onto uh, something that I can uh, do my copying on. And what I've got here is a, um, a small LED light table that I got. This is a port trace that came from B&H. And I use this. It's nicely daylight balanced light, very even. And as you can see here, I have an old negative carrier from my Bessler Enlarger that I use as a mask for the negatives when I put them on here. And it helps with extraneous light, that kind of thing. 
<coughs> excuse me. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that negative and I'm going to put it under here, uh, emulsion down, and uh, I'm going to set the mask up over on it quite nice, you know, nicely like this. And now, what I need to do is be able to see it on the screen like I would see it in the camera so that I can do all of my adjustments. Now, I've already gone ahead and I've set my correct um, height, that kind of thing, just so I wouldn't go through that with you. Now, what I need to do is get my camera connected to the computer. So what I do is, I've, I've told you before, I use Lightroom pretty much all the way around in my, my processing. Um, and then I move things to, to Photoshop afterwards. But Lightroom is becoming more and more robust all the time. And I'm able to tether the camera directly to the, the computer in this way. So now what we want to do is we want to get the camera connected to the computer. And what we have to do first is we'll go up here to turn on the camera. All right. Let me look through the... Uh, Okay, so it's set up there. Now let's go here and we're going to go to File and we're going to go down here to Tethered Capture and we're going to say Start Tethered Capture. And as you can see here, I've already preset this up with Patreon as my session name. Uh, it's the, uh, the name, the template name for uh, each naming convention is going to be the session name with the sequence number. And I'm not going to put it to any kind of a collection and I'm just going to add any metadata or anything like that. I'm just making a negative. So I'm going to say, OK, now it's detecting the camera. And uh, now you can see that it has detected the camera. I'm down here. I'm choosing my D850. Um, I'm going to go to live view here. I'm going to click that. So it's now opening up the camera and it's showing you, as you can see on the screen, it's going to a live view of the, the image itself here. Now, as you can see, it's not very, uh, it's not very well oriented. So what I like to do is rather than try to move the negative around, I'm just going to move this small light table around and I'm going to get it set up the way that I want it in here. Now there is a bit of a, um, a lag, so you just have to be patient in getting it set up here. So now, I'm going to go straight in this way. There we go, a little bit more. This is great. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, as you can see, I'm getting my whole, my whole image here. Bottom it out a little bit more. There we go. Now that's going to do for me. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now, as you can see down in here, I've got all my settings for the camera. Now, I've got it set on autofocus right now because that is going to focus in on the best uh, plane of focus for me. Now, if I really wanted to get detailed about this, I could zoom in and I could, I could zoom in on the grains of, uh, uh, on the film grain in there. But I know from experience that this thing focuses pretty well on autofocus. So I'm going to leave it to that. I've got my setting at 1 80th of a second at f8. Now, you would think I might want to close down further, but that's not really what my, I want to do. I don't want to go all the way down. I'm going to stay right around f8 because that's going to help with any extraneous light bouncing around and it's also going to give me enough, enough depth of field that even if I'm not right on focus, it's going to give me a little bit uh, extra that way. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I've already got this set up. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go over here to, uh, and it's already got it set as negative invert. So it's going to come out as a positive. It's going to flip it around and give me a positive on the screen. So here we go. We're going to make the exposure. As you can see, it fired off here. Now over on here on the screen, you're going to see it pop up and there it is. And then it just inverted into a positive. And it's looking pretty good. Um, you know, this was a nighttime image, kind of foggy, um, that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give it just a little bit more. Let's go to uh, a 60th and see what happens. Ah, that looks pretty good. I like that a little bit more. So even just to give me another exposure, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change it once again. We're going to go down to a 50th of a second. There's the photograph. 
There we go. Now, for some odd reason, it decided to flip it itself around that way. Okay, I think I've got a good range of those right there. So, as you can see, I've already done this. I've got myself a good uh, negative image of this. Now, you can see that it's also in a square format. That's another thing I can do with the, uh, the D850, is I can go in a one-to-one -one format, and that helps me because if I'm shooting at a full frame, I've got a lot of area of perhaps white or other ways to have extraneous light bouncing around, and I just want to use the part of the sensor that I'm going to be using. So I went to a one-to-one -one in the uh, camera, and that's how I got this. So, okay. So there we are. I'm going to turn off the, the, uh, the screen here, and I'm going to actually turn off the camera. And I have my images here, so let's go down here. It says detecting camera. I'm going to cancel that because uh, that's happening because I, I uh, disconnected the camera without turning it off here. So let's cut down to the business how, now here in the next part of how I'm going to actually work on this image, okay? So uh, bear with me here while I get my bearings, and uh, I'll be right back, all right? Okay, so now I've got the image digitized. And now it's no different than any other image, whether I've shot it with my digital camera or uh, with a film camera. Um, I can work on it in Photoshop and in Lightroom like I would any other image. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm looking at these negatives that I've made, or they're showing up as positives here. And I'm thinking I'm going to go with this middle exposure. So um, basically, let me rotate it around right now. <clears throat> and open it up here. Now I'm going to begin working on it here like I would any other image uh, in the darkroom or here. So what I've got, one problem I've got right away is that I didn't notice when I was making the exposure is there's a hair there. Now, you know, this happens. This is the kind of thing that happens. And what I would normally do is I would go back and reshoot this. But for the purposes of the video, I'm going to actually retouch this out. But I'm not going to get to that um, until a little further in the video here. First off, I'm going to start with this uh, by, by cropping the image the way that I would at any other time. And I'm going to go over here to the Develop module. Now again, for those of you that might be watching this for the first time, I'm pretty heavy on using Adobe Lightroom. Um, th with each iteration of it and each release of it, it's gotten so much better and so much more robust. And requiring less of a need to go to Photoshop. Um, very often I only go to Photoshop on my final, um, my final uh, finishing out the image just before I go to a digital negative or before I go to some sort of a positive um, in, a, in the other way. Um, usually that's my fine tuning is in Photoshop, but pretty much up to that point now, uh, everything I do is in Photoshop or in uh, Lightroom. So. What I'm going to do here, now that I'm in the develop mode, is I'm going to go to the, the, uh, the crop module here. And uh, I'm going to crop down to my, you know, to my intended image here. Now, as you can see, it's a little, a little off. Um, babe, actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go back here to... Uh, I can see that the camera was probably... When you do this, you've got to keep your camera pretty much equal level plane to whatever the, 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 the uh, film plane is. And if you don't, sometimes you get a little bit of skewing in your image. And, and I think I've got a little bit of that here vertically. So what I'm going to do is just go down here and I'm going to correct that uh, by going down here to my vertical um, uh, slider. And then, as you can see, that kind of straightened things up for me a little bit. Let's see there. There we go. Right there. Now, what I'll do is I'll go back up here to the cropping and I will uh, I'll straighten it out a little bit here. All right, and then I'm going to bring it down to my image area and crop out the uh, edges of the negative. Bring it down a little bit more over here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So then I'll click on enter or return here. <clears throat> and that'll crop me in to where I want to be. Now, you can see the image is pretty close where I want it to be. I mean, I remember this night very well. I mean, even though this was a long time ago, um, 
I used to go into these areas and photograph this Rouge plant. And I was right across the area, it's called the Turning Basin, a big part of the Rouge River where uh, freighters would come in with iron ore and they would turn around in there. So you can figure this is a big area because they can turn a freighter around. <coughs> now, this was also one of the older parts of the plant, that, which you can see in the background is the power, the, the, uh, the power stacks. That was the power plant that basically ran the whole place. That's since been torn down and actually everything in this image right now is completely gone now. And the reason I was attracted to it is um, Charles Sheeler back in the day uh, photographed at this plant and he did some beautiful images and some of them incorporated some of what you see in this image. And uh, being a fan of those images and having this right outside my back door practically, it, it really made it, uh, you know, it really made it amazing for me to go out there at night and you'd hear the sounds of it. But it, and, you know, there were no people around, so it was almost like being in the middle of the wilderness. It was like this industrial wilderness. So anyway, I, I can remember this night quite well. <clears throat> it was a real foggy evening. I was shooting this, I think, across the bay with maybe like a 150 lens on my Hasselblad. So, uh, so this is actually, as you could see, this was pretty much a full frame, frame negative. Uh, now, what I, what I want to do with this image is I want to uh, increase the contrast a little bit. Uh, there's, there's some certain things down here in the bottom of the image that I want to sort of dull out so they're not really part of the, the image. Um, I'm just going to go through and process it the way that I would have done this um, when I originally did it. So um, I'm going to go up here to first, I'm going to start with, uh, in the develop mode, I'm going to go to um, the... Uh, the shadow areas here, and I'm going to bring the shadows down a little bit in this. Oh, actually, no. <laughs> this is something that I have to... Uh, everything, because this is actually a negative that I'm working on, everything is working um, in the opposite direction. So, I'm going to actually increase the shadows here, and that's going to bring my shadow detail down a little bit. And the reason I'm bringing it down a little bit is I've got some great shadow detail in here that, that can, that can, you know, that, that's very important and will stay there. But it's kind of darkening things down here in the bottom. And, and to continue on that, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to put a mask down in the bottom. I'm going to open up a linear gradient mask here. And I'm going to draw that up here. And what I'm going to do is this foreground area where there's very little in there that's important to me. Actually, I want that to be almost graphically black in a way. I'm going to work on this area specifically with this mask. So I'm going to go here to the exposure first, and I'm going to drop that exposure. Well, I'm going to raise it up. I'm going to drop the exposure down a little bit in there. <clears throat> and I'm also going to do a little bit of shadows where I'm dropping the shadows down in, even inside of that mask. And as you can see, it's bringing it down quite a bit there. So I'm going to go here to my blacks, and I'm going to increase those in the area as well. There we go. That's getting more to where I like it. So that's good enough for me. I mean, that takes a lot of your eye away from this foreground area. So I'm going to put that mask in there. Now I'll show you if I go back to a, um, my backspace bar here, um, or backslash bar here, I can show you where it was. So you can see this is where it was. And this is where I brought it. I just brought it down a little bit. Because that area to me is not so much import of importance. What's more important to me is this area here in the middle and the stacks and that kind of thing. Now, what I'm going to do now is bring a, a linear mask down over everything else but that area that I just worked on. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create another mask. And I'm going to give it a, a, linear, <clears throat> a linear gradient. And I'm going to bring that down from the top here almost down into the area which I think is the most important of the image. And once again, I'm going to drop the exposure up here. There we go. Now it's getting down to the area where I want it. Now, of course, this is a little bit more accentuated than what it was. But again, when I make these images, I'm seeing them in my mind's eye. So I'm seeing what I want it to look like, really. You know, I'm using what's there, but I'm also seeing what I want it to look like and what I'm going to do to it when I got into the dark room back in the day. In this case, what I'm going to do when I get it into the light room. Um, <clears throat> so you can see where I'm dropping it down a little bit. I'm going to drop it even a little bit more. 
and try to bring it a little bit more in line with the bottom. And I, again, I know this, this is very, um, very kind of exaggerated, but that's, that's how I want it. So uh, I'm good there. Now I can work inside of here. I can work inside of that mask as well by increasing the blacks in there. Now, I don't want to go that far, but I can drop them a little bit. There we go. And then I can go over here to the shadows and once again I can drop those shadows just a little bit. I can actually even go down here into clarity, which is basically a compression of the mid-tone areas. Uh, I'll go down here to clarity and I'll pump up the clarity in there a little bit. Ooh, actually it's the opposite. Now I'm going to go down and pump up. There, just a, just a skosh, just a little bit. Okay, I'm kind of liking where that is. So I'm gonna hit return on that. Now, another thing that I didn't do originally, even though that this was a black and white image of a black and white negative, I mean an image of a black and white negative, it's a color image of a black and white negative. And one thing that I forgot to do with you here is to go back up here and to go into Let's close the masks. We're going to go into black and white mode here. And it's really not going to make much difference in your vision of it, but, but it, does, it, it does help uh, in, in the final file, which in, in this case, I'm going to be making a digital negative and I'm going to make a print for you to see what, so you can see what it looks like when I made the print. So there we go. I'm liking it there. Uh, as you can see, this annoying hair is still there, but I'm going to take care of that in an instant when it gets over to Photoshop. Um, and there's other, some, some other dust in here and things. I mean, this negative is uh, 40 years old, so I've kept it in some pretty good, pretty good shape, actually. Okay, so everything's looking good. I mean, everything's looking real good. Uh, other than in this area here, it's a little light. And maybe it's a little light for me over in here. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop another linear gradient on the side of that. But one thing that I do like to do with these two is to add a little vignetting too. So what I can do is I can try a little vignetting at first. I'll go down here to the vignette setting. Um, drop that just a hair. Very little. I don't really want to darken the corners too much on this one. Okay, so we've got that now. So now that I've got this kind of set the way I want, I still want to bring in that a little bit on the sides. So I'm going to uh, come up here and I'm going to create another linear mask. And I'm just going to draw it over here from the side a little bit. And then while I've got it there, I'm going to drop the exposure down just a, just a hair like that. And the other side I'm going to leave alone because I like the way that, as you can see over here, I like the way that it trails off. I mean, I just think that it's nice and evenly balanced right now. So what we're going to do now to finish things out is we're going to export it over to Photoshop. And uh, we're going to continue on over there. What I'm going to do is take that hair out and... Um, basically clean up this side a little bit. And I think that that should probably be about it. So here we go. Let's see, use the standard embedded profile. There we are. There's our image. So now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use my healing brush. I'm going to give it a slightly larger brush area. And I'm just going to draw it along this hairline here. And we're going to see what artificial intelligence does to get rid of it. Let's let it go there. Ah, look at that. Perfect. It even continued the wires along there. Now, some people might wonder why I'm even leaving the wires there. And that's because they're an important part of the image. You know, I mean, this was an industrial landscape and that was what I, I you know, what was there and part of the image itself. And, uh, But over the years, I have asked a few, had a few people say that now you can remove that digitally. Why, why don't you? There's another hair over here. You can see I'm working out a couple other things. 
Yeah, looks good. So now basically from here, now let's go here to full screen. There's our image. It's quite nice and that's the one you picked. So I, I'm really happy about that. So let's go here. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come back here. What I would normally do is I would go through and I would invert this image. I would go to image adjust invert because I do wanna go back to making it into a negative. And that's what I would do. And I would export that to my print tool and I would print out a digital negative and make a, uh, a platinum print and even maybe a gum over print. And that just so happens to be what I had done here. So uh, I took the liberty of making a print of this image uh, to show you. Um, so what I had done is I taken this all the way through, I made a digital negative, I made a platinum print of it, and then I did a gum layer over that platinum print. And as you can see, this is what we got. So, yeah, always been really happy with this image. It's one of my favorite ones. It goes back way far in my career as a photographer, and uh, um, I've just always really been proud of it, so I'm, I'm happy you picked it. So with that, I'm going to leave you. Uh, we'll get on to another one. I think in about a week I'll try to pick, about three new uh, pick three new photographs for you to choose from, and I'll put up another little video then so you can see those. And in the meantime... I wanted to thank uh, my good friends Becky and Andy, their supporters here on Patreon, uh, and they also are the, uh, the um, they, they run uh, Grateful Guitars, and they gave me this really nice t-shirt here, and uh, they don't know that I'm doing this. I'm hoping they don't mind, but it's a really beautiful shirt, and uh, those of you that know me know I'm a big music fan, and, uh, and this is pretty nice, so I'm really happy they did that. Uh, Thank you, Becky and Andy. Thank you, all of my Patreon uh, uh, members, for your support. And uh, I want to keep this thing going. I'm having a really good time. Uh, it looks like I might be going out on the road here in the next couple of weeks. So if I do so, I will take you along with me. But in the meantime, look for a new poll soon. Uh, we'll go through three new photographs for you to choose from. And, uh, and we'll go from there. I think that these might even be color images that I'll choose this time. So we'll see what you want, all right? So again, thank you for all your support. Thanks for everything and uh, have a good day. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.